Hey everybody, Garrett Claridge here. Today we're going to be messing around with a pair of Lafayette coaxial speakers. These have a 12 inch woofer and a 3 inch paper tweeter. Being a coaxial design, we have this little tweeter pod here placed right in the center of the speaker frame. Nice thick felt gasket on here and it looks like a uh, leather surround. You can see how it's like patched in. We have the tweeter leads running right through the speaker cone here. So what we have here is some classic 1960s hi-fi equipment. This is kind of the all-in-one package. You were able to order these in like a catalog and have everything ready to go with a uh, tweeter and a crossover network and everything all in one little speaker here. But you're not going to believe I actually sold these maybe like six years ago when they came back to me in a lot worse shape. Wonder how many people in town owned and tried these out before they came back to me. Now, I'm not going to let these go again. <laughs> Definitely not. Wonder what kind of paper this is. It's probably like rice paper. <laughs> this one's in a little bit better condition. We have a few repairs on this one. Looks like, oh yeah, a big rip here. And a couple rips in it. And this uh, leather is totally decaying. This cut up triple wire coming out here was for the L pad or level control for the tweeter. It would have just been a knob that was on there to control the intensity of the treble essentially. I sold these with both the knobs or L pads intact and they were missing now. So just bypassing with this wire. <laughs> of course I have one of these things and it's not even from these, but it's from the same, same model I think. That's exactly the uh, knob that came with these things, although mine had like a really cool, well the ones, that, when I sold these it had like a really cool Bakelite knob on there. But this is what the level control looked like for these. And so you can see the tinsel leads on this tweeter pod here are unhooked, but it doesn't really matter right now because I think this tweeter is blown anyway. This tweeter is hooked up, although it must have been mended. Look at how thin, it doesn't have anywhere to go. They could get ripped off at any time. And, uh, well, uh, from what I've tried out, this tweeter is absolutely on its last legs. It hardly makes any noise at all. Hmm. Oh, wow. I'm seeing right away here. 1959 written on this capacitor here. This is an old, wow, this is a really old uh, crossover network. Uses this LC filter, I think they're called. Oh, man. <laughs> Shizuki. Shizuki. <laughs> huh. Okay, we got the uh, Almico magnet. Crazy little logo on here. I had to stop and think if that was the uh, biohazard logo for a second. <laughs> oh my so that's an alnico magnet aluminum nickel cobalt mixture I like the color of the paint behind the uh, magnet here i wonder if that's what was the original color or what looks a lot more like a tint of an old car or something that old automotive brown look i wonder what this is made out of metal oh the uh the basket itself is all aluminum and we have a metal bell now this one is not looking so good right you see the big bump in the uh, back here this thing rolled off the bench probably because of that real awkward um, magnet right I didn't have this foam and it just went rolling we have another 1959 capacitor good to see these things are at least the same age that surround ever look a lot more leathery from the backside. We have some little uh, flathead screws here. Ooh. Oh, that's probably why that tweeter wasn't working. She ain't plugged in. Oh. Snapshot. Nice. All right. So that was just probably like half unsoldered. Uh, where's the other one? Oh. Ah. Cool. I just got to fix these. Well, fix the pods. <laughs> I freaking did it wrong. Ah. Get off there. Man. 
Here, I think I got him going. Oh man, yeah. That sounds a lot different. <laughs> These were not hooked up right at all when I got them back. So now that the tweeters are all fixed up, I'm going to be plugging these in and testing them, but I don't want to give them too much power, so I'm going with the JBL Charge 3 without the drivers here. Just going to hook them up into the amplifier of this, and that should give us more than enough to test this out without causing any damage. So I have low frequency mode or whatever going on with that JBL boombox. So I'm able to, you know, if I go to two hertz here. Oh, look, I broke one of the solder connections doing this. <laughs> look how hard it is on that. It's going to break this one too, I bet. It's just about to do it, yeah. Man. <laughs> so we can see the movements working well. Pretty impressive really like <laughs> these things are old and not very much power they're very efficient not hearing much mechanical noise there's a bunch of holes and breaks in the metal and stuff so we're doing pretty good <laughs> not the best repair job but it's probably gonna get us through it <laughs> we got the tweeters working these things are so darn loud and clear but uh, not in a good way they kind of sound like a uh, like a horn PA speaker or something. Really tinny. Although they are out of the box right now and the tweeters are on full frickin' blast without the uh, L-pad controls hooked up. The vintage dust from these is making me cough and sneeze like crazy though. Sending so much dust everywhere. <laughs> now that we have them repaired once again, let's check out how these were advertised back in the day. This is a catalog advertisement for the SK58. Each driver had a price of $29.50 USD, and judging for inflation, that would be just over $305 each today. So they're claiming 30 to 15,000 cycles per second. 30 hertz is pretty darn low for this thing, especially without a cabinet. <laughs> we got the sheepskin free edge cone mounting, one and a half pound magnet weight, three inch tweeter. We have the LC network. That's an old way of saying the crossover divider, although that actually did have an LC kind of filter part in it, rated at 20 watts continuous power. So it's definitely soaking up the power just fine and they're darn efficient. They are very loud. Just with that uh, little JBL boombox, it was cranking up in here. Then we have this page talking a little more about the fabulous Lafayette Elliptoflex um, complete speaker system with enclosure. So this kind of makes me wonder if back then you were, like if you bought these items, if they came together or you had to install the driver on your own. Speaker cabinets in those days were often treated like another piece of furniture that somebody could build on their own and there was quite often a lot of plans in popular mechanics or other DIY magazines. You may have noticed this big old speaker in the background and I pulled it out because it's a perfect example of how things were done back in the day. This seems like it was made out of just scrap wood. It's mostly made out of solid pine which is a horrible speaker cabinet material and then the back is a solid birch plywood. I have no clue what's going on inside as for the drivers but I did shine a light in there and whoever made it did have a knowledge of how to build a crossover network on their own. <coughs> Now as fun as that is, I think we gotta go a little harder here. Let's try out the Tapco J800 Juice power amp. I just picked this one up not too long ago. Man, they sound quite a bit different when you give them a little bit of power. <laughs> All right, so before I get in trouble for copyright, I'm gonna use the YouTube library here and try that out.
These are actually starting to surprise me a little bit here. They're taking quite a bit of power. <laughs> Maybe they just needed to be played a little bit and had the dust blown out of them to get them working good again. <laughs> this one start to make some mechanical noise now. Maybe it's a tweeter. <laughs> now that got the dust flying all over the place. I think it's the tweeters making that popping noise. So it was the tweeters that were making that uh, harsh popping mechanical noise. I can't believe, oh look, the uh, tinsel lead broke off. I can blow up these tweeters separately. Oh man, <laughs> they got that screw in there nicely. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the bells out. It doesn't even work as a bell. I got a little excited and kind of ripped the terminal off this. Oh, darn it. I'm using this BBE Sonic Maximizer here to crank up the bass levels, if you're wondering. <laughs> so now that I have these hooked up to the good amplifier, I'm going to try that 40 hertz tone test again to see if they do better in free air with a better amplifier. Nope, they are still almost silent at 40 hertz. All I hear is a mechanical noise. Huh. Actually, I wonder if these are out of phase. Sure looks like it. <laughs> Not sure how I would have done that. Maybe that's why it was silent. Let me mess around here and fix this. Oh man, I was going crazy trying to find where the wiring was messed up in here, but I forgot to do the old test with the battery here. What I thought was positive, so I'll put it on the speaker driver here, if I can get it. See how it's sucking that in. Now I'm going to do it to the other terminal here, and <laughs> it's pushing it out. These things are not, like the coils aren't in the same uh, polarity even though I have it wired like the positive to the left side here on each one, it doesn't mean anything with these speakers apparently. That is the first time I've ever seen anything like that happen and I don't know why I just assumed that they would be the same polarity. <laughs> but, oh man, huh. That uh, kind of boggled my mind right there. So uh, let's try this again. Now this is gonna mess your mind up here now that they're in phase. 29 hertz. If I can get it going here. Oh, turn the amp on. I have the uh, Sonic Maximizer unhooked now, by the way. Uh, ooh, the lights flicker when I turn that on. How cool is this? That's like a total optical illusion with the camera because it's recording at 60 hertz. So I'll bring it to uh, 30 hertz. See, these are starting to sound better. I, they were just out of phase, I think. Maybe that's why everyone hated them. And I didn't like them so much. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it to 30, or uh, 40 hertz, sorry, the what uh, they say that the free air resonance is. Oh man, look, it's still, it's not great, but it's a lot louder than it was. The amount of power that these are taking, and like if the tweeters were working, they, they would have been a great mid-range speaker, even open baffles. So I can see why people do it, but unfortunately these are too far gone anyway, so 
<laughs> I'm just gonna continue messing with them. I'm gonna add some more bass in there to get them flapping around, just with the uh, mixer this time. <laughs> I can't believe these coils, they actually work well. Ah! What the f Oh my god. Oh man, I wish I had a backup camera running for this one, but um, you probably heard the sound effect because my audio recorder is still going. <laughs> but the GoPro shut off and uh, I accidentally hit the remote and it went to like right through all the frequencies and just totally scared the crap out of me and made all this dust uh, from the leather or goat skin crap fly all over the place. That was damn loud too. So I don't know if the uh, <laughs> I don't know if these are still going or not. That was oh, I guess they are. Oh man, that was so friggin' loud. So I was playing with these low frequencies and then it goes. It went through that when it was cranked up. And, oh man. That made my heart race. <laughs> Surprised that took that peak though. These things are insane. I can't believe the quality of them. This is something I thought was a total write off piece of crap. These are holding up. Let's say like 1958 speakers are holding up in uh, my workshop and that is kind of insane to me. <laughs> I'd like to find another pair of these maybe and mess around with them properly because I didn't really get a chance to play with them before uh, they got totally destroyed. Let's say I sold them, not for very much, but uh, it was a long time ago and it was very surprising for me to find these uh, back again. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, my ears are kind of ringing from that. <laughs> oh, I still hear it making noise though. Oh, that's from this other woofer here. 
Oh my god. Oh. No way. <laughs> oh my god. No way. That is nuts. Did you hear that? Was he still making a noise? I can't get it now. Uh. Don't see too many uh, removable. Well, not removable. I guess it just has a nice little bracket holding it on there. Neat. So I took a little break from the video and I went to the thrift store and I found another great example of the home-built hi-fi kind of thing that was going on at the time. Here we have what's definitely a custom design, probably like a 12-inch woofer or something in here. Who knows what kind of uh, <laughs> pattern that went on. It's like a triangle corner box. I always call these things, they're like the lottery tickets of the hi-fi world because, you know, we got this ugly box, but we have no idea of knowing what's inside. You don't know if there's a fancy uh, kind of speaker in here or just like an old car speaker or something. Who knows? <laughs> it's a very poorly made box, though. It must be someone's, like, wood shop project. <laughs> Glenn, we don't have to burn anything you don't want to. Just grab stuff like newspapers, junk mail, um, uh, blankets, and uh, pillows. Oh, oh, and our, our Valentine's Day cards from Teddy. Oh, it is that picture Tina drew of us. Oof. It looked like a tweaked out Muppet. And as for the remaining Lafayette, I actually hooked a tweeter back up here, and I'm giving it another try, just in mono here. I'm uh, playing a couple TV shows on it, and it's not sounding too bad, but that tweeter is very very harsh so i don't have any bass boost or anything going on right now just a bit of treble reduction damn loud and clear actually things are loud I can't believe how much like sound is coming out like I absolutely underestimated these things they are pretty kick-ass speakers really <laughs> wow I got to go down with the mid-range quite a bit here in the highs this is just intense I'm almost tempted to plug in a better tweeter here. Uh. Ha! Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, with this dome tweeter on here, that helped a lot. Like, that just changed the whole situation here. Those tweeters are totally crap. But <laughs> these would be awesome as just a mid-high. 
without an equalizer that's still a little harsh, but um, again, this is just free air. If we had the L pad for the tweeter going, then that would help a ton as well. This is just awesome. I can't believe how much power these take. I've probably said this a couple times now, but I absolutely did not think these speakers were going to perform this well. They're actually kind of nice. Try to get this bell off here. There we go. <laughs> oh, this cheesy YouTube audio library. Looks like we're stuck. Come on. Oh. Lost a bit of glue here. I went a bit wild with the glue gun and just ruthlessly stuck all these parts back together. We have the surround sort of back in place here. And most importantly is this suspension down here is not just blowing out anymore. My glue job really limits the motion of the cone now, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. I really want to see what this thing can do with a high pass filter. I imagine this is going to get dangerously loud in here because this thing is just crazy efficient. And if it doesn't have to handle those bass notes, it's probably just gonna friggin' scream.
man, this driver is, just as I expected, super loud without having to deal with those bass frequencies. And it actually uh, seems to be flapping around quite a bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that might have broke the coil finally. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe how loud and clear this thing is. So we didn't get any smoke or anything like that, but we... Oh, oh god, I shouldn't have ripped that. And all the dust from ripping that stuff. Uh... Man, that the glue held in really nicely. <laughs> I didn't think that would work. Now inside here, I'm not seeing any coil breakage. I really can't believe the power of that glue. But it's uh, pretty good. Hot glue makes a difference. <laughs> this coil definitely... It's seen some better days, but... Can't really tell where it broke. <laughs> So these definitely seem like they can take a little more power than 20 watts, even in old-timey standards. That is pretty crazy results here. These things are definitely well built. I'm going to check these coils out and see if there's any chance we can do anything else with them. This one doesn't look so good though. Continuity test. Oh, no way. Wow. That's actually still working. I wonder what happened. And this one, I can actually see where it uh, broke. This one was a, definitely a mechanical failure. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh man. So we're up on my front deck here and we have the coils. We also have this very dangerous little wire here that's just a Edison cord to like bare clippy things. <laughs> you know what's coming. There's no way I can uh, truly test the power of these coils. <laughs> they're a lot more than 20 watts and I bet they're gonna stink so I'm bringing them outside but we're gonna turn them into toaster elements. All right, let's see what this 20 watt coil can do. <laughs> I got the microphone nice and close, so hopefully we can get a bit of sound effect too. Oh yeah. Wow, that was a pretty classy coil burnout. Did very well. <laughs> oh man, I'm glad I didn't do that in the house. It's still scorching. I don't want to touch it yet, but it's totally unwinding. <laughs> ah, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> wow, I could hear that just resonate through the neighborhood. <laughs> just one loud clap. <laughs> Stinky.
Okay, coil number two, the one that doesn't look so trashed. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to light another little campfire out here. <laughs> and here we go. Awesome little plume of smoke that just totally like, looked like a mushroom cloud <laughs> coming out the front of the house here. Hot, 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 hot. Oh my. <laughs> oh, there's a nice piece of felt in here. Well, I don't think we can get any more action out of these Lafayette things, but how about you guys join me for the speaker lottery here? We got these two cabinets that I'm using to hold up my center channel, and this one over here, I have no idea what's inside. As I was saying, it's quite often home-built cabinets, and you never know what the heck you're going to get inside these things until you crack them open. I'm so happy they don't use these flat screws anymore. These things are just horrible to work with. Ooh, I can start to smell the vintage. <laughs> okay. What the hell is that? I've never seen any kind of insulation like this before. I'm afraid to touch it. <laughs> huh. What's this thing? Oh! Look at this. It's got an interesting smell to it. Yeah, this stuff's like disintegrating. I don't know what the heck kind of insulation that would be. So we have two capacitors in line here and a L-pad. Someone obviously had a little guidance when it came to this because, uh, wow. Yeah, it's a nice DIY project for sure. Huh. You know what I'm seeing here is a bit of fabric here and this fabric around here. I wonder if this got recovered at some point and it had this crazy looking diamond plate gold stuff on it. Now these things, what the heck, right? <laughs> More flat screws. Okay, we're on our last screw, so cross your fingers, we got like another pair of Lafayettes in here or something. <laughs> well, oh, there. Oh, what the heck is that? Oh, there's a sticker on it. So many different kinds of uh, color on here. Yeah, I bet this was like a kid's high school project or something, because it's like all scrap wood. A little bit of uh, paper rod on here. A couple cracks. I think it has quite a bit of motion, though. Interesting way it uh, rusted out. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Well, they knew how to solder. Hmm. Oh, I don't know how I didn't notice we got Robertson, Robertson screws on this one. Oh, it's not even the same speaker. No. <laughs> Ooh, this board is like, used to be a floor or something. And it had tiles on it. This one's looking nasty. All right, guys, let's take a closer look at our lottery winnings here. First up, we got this rusty old thing without any obvious brand names on it. I'll put the model numbers, there's a few of them, on the screen. <laughs> Next up, we have this Stormberg Carlson. Uh, we got this little shelf here. It was probably for a transformer or something like that. Felt dust cap. <laughs> this one has a couple little cracks in it here. Paper is aging really poorly. 
Here's everything out of that big pine cabinet. I actually made a uh, speaker selector out of all the wire that was inside that uh, cabinet. It was really cool old wire. <laughs> Just old parts there. So here's the L pad. We have the tweeter that is unfortunately blown out. I just love how the model number and the information is written by hand with a pen on the back of this thing. <laughs> Too bad it doesn't work. This woofer has no obvious markings either, but I'll put up the model number anyway. If anyone knows what any of these are from, I would love to hear from you. Now check out the wire connections on here. I'm sure I've seen these in the past, but I always thought that they were just hardwired, soldered in there. Now when I was uh, stripping the wires out, I went and accidentally... <laughs> I thought I broke it. But, you know, all this time, I had no idea. I've never really seen these connectors before. But it um, has a male end and a female end and presses in. And I've had speakers like this before, but never thought to just yank the thingy like <laughs> totally blew my mind that's like way before my time i think now i actually had all this stuff sitting on the counter while i was editing the first part of the video and uh the cat jumped up here and it gave me a real good laugh when she knocked it off the counter because all the rust just totally left its mark on the bench here <laughs> it has this yellow rusty junk all over it and I didn't notice that before, but um, it's like a chalky rust all over the thing. Let's see if I can probably... Yep. <laughs> and it makes like a real musky smell on your fingers when you touch it. So I guess it's time to fire up the amplifier and see how they do compared to the Lafayettes. I'm going to try testing these with my intro music. Oh, <laughs> these are plugged in. <laughs> Had these uh, tangents plugged in. playing a 10 hertz tone here and you can definitely tell this one moves quite a bit more than this one does there's 20 hertz i'm starting to hear it a little bit actually i think it's this one 30 hertz starting to make a touch of noise but not really in its uh, frequency range. <laughs> uh, 50 hertz, you can start to hear it. Yeah, just like I thought, they're, they're like mid-ranges. They're really mid-range heavy. <laughs> There's our 10 hertz test to see the movement. There's 30 hertz, and that's pretty impressive. I'm actually hearing that 30 hertz tone free air. 40, very nice. I can actually hear the glue peeling every once in a while. 45, wow. Sorry, there's 50. This thing's really impressive free air. Perfect. You know what? That's a pretty impressive driver right there.
Man, that made the dust fly. <laughs> I actually found a date of 1962 on this L pad. Good thing we have the power of video editing here because I ended up getting pretty distracted last night with uh, some new lights that came in the mail and a friend's puppy that uh, stopped by. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, continue on here. Oh, is that hooked up now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fragile. <laughs> oh, you can't even touch the shit. Well, <laughs> here's a break. <laughs> wow. This is hilarious. I'm surprised it stayed together that long. Is this? Oh, I couldn't, can't even touch it. Oh, we can see what's uh, going on inside here with those weird uh, terminals now. You kind of hug them. Really neat. <laughs> I did a double check, and definitely nothing going on with this. <laughs> Okay, I'm bad. I went and turned the bass signal up on this. something <laughs> oh it's all falling apart and like melting uh, oh, oh look at this <laughs> oh. man that is some gnarly looking colors in here 
from that rust. So we're down to the last driver here. This definitely has the smallest magnet of the lot, but it is holding up the best material-wise out of all of them, except for the Lafayettes, of course. They had really awesome strong paper still. You may have noticed the blob of black glue in the center of this dust cap. That's not covering anything up or holding anything together. That's actually just part of the production process, and maybe I can try to explain this here. It's kind of fun, but uh, they'd have a dowel or a piece of wood with a little bit of that glue on the end of it, and they'd be able to grab a dust cap position it in the center of the cone and then add the glue and then bump <laughs> so that is all that is pretty fun little uh, bit of information from when they used to do these by hand oh maybe the cone's not in very good shape <laughs> hey that's interesting there's like a piece of metal they put in there before the dust cap Oh yeah, this one's falling apart too, actually. <laughs> totally looks like an aluminum dust cap with the middle cut out. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> well, at least the uh, spider stayed intact. That's funny. Wow. Yeah, just totally decayed. And look that. See, that shook apart on its own. <laughs> I went ahead and turned down the base now, and I'm going to go from 25% to like 75% on the amplifier. <laughs> <laughs> Pop the glue. May have to go less on the base even more. <clears throat> it's gonna blast out again. <laughs> that break it oh I can smell something oh yeah I can see a big zap in there <laughs> man well that's about all I can get out of these things but there's definitely a clear winner here. You get what you pay for, and it seemed pretty obviously worth it back in the day to spend a bit of money on good audio equipment. So we have the Lafayettes back on the bench here. I wanted to conclude the video by talking a little bit about why all the audiophiles that tried these speakers did not like them. If you weren't there for the previous part of the video where I figured it out, we actually had one of these woofer cones going out of phase from the rest of the drivers. Even though the wiring was all the same, everything was hooked up right, it drove me absolutely crazy. It took a while to figure this one out, but uh, let's take a look here. We have the logos upside down here when these are pointing this direction. I'm going upside down. This one's upside down. Hard to see it. But... Now this one... It's pointing the right way up here. 
Maybe that's the one that has the uh, reverse magnet, possibly. It's sticking. How about these? So, I don't think that label really says anything about our magnet polarity. Now, here we go. See this magnet? Now it wants to do a flip. This is our reversed polarity magnet right here. <laughs> so, even though the wiring was the same, in the factory, this core was put in in reverse. Now, even if this was used in mono, the tweeter would still be out of phase. So this is a pretty big mess up for the uh, production side of this very expensive old speaker here. See that black part right there? All it took was that being put in upside down. And they probably had a uh, way of checking because the labels don't seem to mean anything on these. Man, that should have been caught in the, uh, you know production quality control testing and stuff. Well, I guess that's about it for these things. If you guys enjoyed the content today, be sure to give a like, drop a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I truly appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching, and have yourself a great day.